So I just wanted to share this with you guys. I'm at a customer's house um, doing a service for them. We got a couple breeding uh, pairs of clownfish here. Absolutely gorgeous. Got the male right there. Um, but yeah, so the customer, the client uh, breeds clownfish. Uh, they're on vacation right now, so we're taking care of their tank. So I just did a water change and uh, here are the little babies. Check this out, how cool is this? They are gorgeous. Really, really, really cool. So these, uh, these people breed clownfish. And uh, I guess just for a hobby, it's not like their you know, main source of income, it's just kind of what they like to do. Um, you can see that this is um, an automatic feeder um, that feeds extra small pellets. So these little guys are able to get that several times a day. So you have to make sure when you're breeding clownfish that you uh, keep a clean tank. So after those pellets, you know, the, the pellets that don't get eaten, are, uh, you know, they build up on the, on the bottom here. So I just siphoned up all that and just did a little, uh, just a little water change, nothing too uh, crazy. But I just wanted to share this with you guys. These guys are super cool. And then to the right here, you have a little bit <clears throat> bigger clownfish. Um, that are the next stage of development and these guys are doing really good too but you can see how the food builds up there over a period of time so you got to make sure that you can siphon all that up but really cool so it's, it's a really nice setup here too the other tank that they have at this residence it's a little uh, mixed style reef tank got some big bubble tips massive bubble tips Midas Blenny, <clears throat> you see a Coral Beauty there, Tang, Sacromis, uh, Damsel, Flamehawk, and there's a big old uh, Damsel back there, that little black Damsel, he's pretty cool. And then you got some type of uh, Bristletooth Tang right here. And then there's a Melanaris Ras. So not only do they have the clownfish uh, breeding, they also have a tank for just entertainment purposes. And then they have one more tank in the bedroom. So this is, this is the tank they have in the bedroom. You have a royal grandma, and then there's a six line ras in here somewhere as well. There he goes. Um, but you know, there's, so, there's several corals, corals here. You see some pallies here, uh, some mushrooms in the back. Um, there's even an acan down there, which is pretty interesting given the setup here. Um, and then a bunch, a bunch of xenia, which is really probably keeping the tank super clean. Um, but it does spread everywhere. Seems like they tried a hard coral, but that didn't work out too well. Um, but yeah, just fed these guys a little water change on them. Oh, and look at that, there's a mandarin too. A little green mandarin right there. Which is surprising. Generally, you don't want those fish in a tank this small. But because they breed clownfish, <clears throat> I'm sure they have tons of pods and stuff that they can dose into the, into the tank to keep him happy. But yeah, you generally don't want any type of mandarin or, or fish that generally like mostly eats pods in a tank this small because they'll eat up all the pods in this tank really, really fast. So I'm pretty sure they're dosing pods in this tank to keep that uh, mandarin happy. One last, one last look at the uh, breeding pair here. And then here's a the little bitty babies. <laughs> so cool. And... Here you got your uh, little toddler stage, I guess. So some of the cool things about doing this job is you come across, uh, you know, something like that where they're breeding clownfish, um, and it's uh, just a hobbyist that's doing it for fun. Um, it takes a lot of dedication to do that, and um, it's just really cool to see the people that take the hobby that serious and are successful at it, and then are you know able to probably make a decent. Uh, a uh, little income off of it, so it's pretty cool.